Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. Robert Maxim, one of our favorite and most popular guests, is back to share his incredible journey through several lifetimes as far back as a million years. His blunders, triumphs, and the many worlds and places where these amazing experiences took place. Robert experienced several sleep time visits to other worlds as a child and witnessed countless alien craft. These experiences continue to date in both wake and sleep states. He studied concert piano starting at age three, but changed his calling to science following his visionary experiences. The book series Legacy, the culmination of these experiences, shared with the world for the first time. Back with us on the program, Robert Maxim talking about legacy. Robert, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me on board, Rick. It is great. It's uh, basically what's becoming our monthly visit, the uh, 42nd time that, uh, that we've talked with uh, Robert. And every time we do, we get a whole bunch of emails afterwards, and we'll be reading those emails on the program today. You can get in touch with Robert by going to his website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N dot com, or going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, hitting comments and giving us questions. Robert, shall we start? Are you all set, sir? Let's go. Okay, you're the one that's going to carry this program now for the next uh, few minutes, and we start with this question. <laughs> when you are taken on a visit, what is the purpose, and do they show you something? Oh, well, of course. Uh, all of these visits have something in common, and it's basically to learn something and pass on that message or lesson learned unto, unto others. Uh, now, that lesson can be an encouragement, it could be a teaching, or it could be something that I personally have to face, uh, like a, um, a problem with ego or something from my past that's getting in the way. So usually, yeah, they show me something, and as part of the cure, if we can say that, it's always necessary that we not only take a look at it, but if we truly overcome it, to testify it to others, to the world, and have no qualms about doing that, no reservation, that is a true cure. So that's the purpose behind these, uh, these visitations. And like I mentioned, started at a very young age, continue now, Robert Maxim with us on the program. Question, is heaven the ultimate goal as we are taught by religion? Uh, oh, it's. I like to call it a rest area. You know, if I'm driving down I-40 and I'm, I'm tired and I see a rest area, I'm gonna stop there, take a nap, rest, then I'm gonna keep going. So basically that's what uh, heaven really is. It's just a rest area in an infinite voyage where you pass from this world, you get to this rest area, you learn some more, you bring that knowledge down here to this dimension, uh, you pass on again, you go back. So as God is infinite, so is life. Uh, the moment that you conceive that God is um, the goal to reach, you have aimed too low. So our, our goal is, is to reach infinity. And thank goodness, which means that there is no end to infinity. So when we talk about heaven, that's really not, I don't want to get the wording right here, not a final destination, that heaven is not necessarily permanent? No, it's just a stepping point. It is, you know, a marvelous, a marvelous place indeed. There's many heavenly worlds. Um, on my website, if you take a look at the Venus video, that's a higher dimension of Venus. You go there and it's heavenly. It's beautiful. It's magnificent. Um, but, hey, after a couple of million or billion years, you'll probably see a heaven above that that's even more wonderful and more beautiful than that. So as heaven progresses upwards, it gets even more and more saturated with beauty and wonder and creativity. So there's no end to it. You know, we get caught up in, in the questions, and as I say, we get tremendous response to the questions. Everybody has questions, wants to follow through. The Legacy Series will answer a lot of these questions, 
they will give you a whole lot to contemplate, a whole lot to kick around as you're being entertained by the Legacy series. You'll find all the books available at Robert's website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N dot com. And of course at uh, Amazon, you can link on to all those by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Next question from a listener, what are the rewards for a good life? If we do it properly, life is mm. this life is over, what, what happens to us? What's the reward? Oh, so many. I think that the main one is not coming back here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give that Venus a shot. That sounded like uh, it might not be a bad destination. Oh, you bet. Uh, now, we can think in the meanwhile, of course, we're having to come back and, and improve ourselves, but mental and physical health definitely is a reward. Serving the elements, that's what you're going to be doing in another dimension, so you might as well start doing it here. Uh, how about being part of God's community, uh, following the universal laws, and progressing positively? So the rewards for a good life starts by following the universal laws, taking care of your mental and physical state, serving uh, the infinite. That in itself is a reward. You're building your inner self. You're building your home away from here. That is the reward. Robert Maxim with us on the program. I mentioned the Legacy Series, all the programs that we've done, but uh, the World Tour continues. A couple more stops in Los Angeles, I understand, coming up in January. You've got a, a speech in January. Uh, talk about that, and then uh, what a big conference coming up in Los Angeles in January as well, and at Spain in February. Yeah, well, I'll be giving a uh, uh, speaking engagement too, actually. Uh, around the 26th of January in LA. Uh, there's go it's going to be in Spanish, so bring your dictionaries. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then uh, the date is not yet set, but I have a call for a speaking engagement also at the Conscious Life Expo for 2019. That's going to be at the LAX Hilton. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a half hour or a full hour. I'll take the whole day if necessary. I was going to say, good luck with a half hour <laughs> or an hour. You'll need multiple hours oh, to get the message I across. Know. I'll take whatever I can get. And then Spain is coming up February the uh, the 24th. And then Argentina, it's uh, somewhere in April. You know, it's really amazing. And you've had, I think after the last program, you were back and, uh, and did Vegas for, for several days in Vegas. I think that was a two-day event because of the demand. You, you sold out the, the first time you were there. Are you seeing a movement, interest in what you, the message that you're talking about, more so maybe than, than any time before? Uh, indeed. I think that there's a movement to pay attention now. And not only to listen, but to to verify. Uh, all of, this was really interesting. Uh, so I was showing slides of um, the pictures that I had drawn of Atlantis, and there were two individuals. One was a lady, another was a gentleman. The uh, the lady actually jumped up and said, "I have seen that before." Uh, I'm actually the, the lady in the blue dress. I know it. I've seen it. And this is the first time I see a picture of it. And then another individual, uh, I showed a different picture of uh, the, uh, the Hall of Qualification in Atlantis. And he also got up and said, that's my master, Tao One. And I mean, you have to read Legacy to know about Tao One and who he was. And he said, he's the one on the right. And I go, you're correct. That's, now, how do you know? That is how amazing. How do you know? <laughs> that so, is amazing. Two confirmations right there. Yeah, and that couldn't just happen, right? I mean, they there had to be validity to what it was that they were saying because it wasn't common knowledge, something somebody off the street would come in and, and be able to recite. And uh, I mean, that just, uh, that's an amazing story. So I you are making an impact and uh, you've got more speaking engagements coming up. You'll find those at Robert's website, uh, rgaten.com and uh, you can link on directly by going to our website thisweekinamerica.us. Next question, recently a friend who was a great guy, humanitarian 
an excellent leader in our community, died of a heart attack. Why? Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, <clears throat> but in all actuality, we have to remember that the appearance of goodness is all relative. And it's, you know, no guarantee of siding with any type of progressive godliness. You, you cannot speak on behalf of anyone's life. Uh, now, as made a word to me, the mind, our hidden motives, our thoughts, and what we eat, our diet, are the reason not only for aging, but also for physical and mental health issues. Uh, if we had a bad diet, if we were sedentary, if we were reliving, for example, being shot to the heart with a, a musket or a, an arrow, I mean, all of those things can play a role. The problem with humanity is that, you know, and this question is exemplary of what's going on with humanity. We, we, we ask, why did this happen? But we have no idea that any of these factors can be playing a role. Why, why was I two years ago deathly ill in a bed and uh, with, with literally a broken neck? I had no idea why. And when I found out what it was, gone. So the more people that I meet, the more they realize that, or they come to understand that everything they are today, health-wise, mental-wise, de their desires, their fears, everything, everything is a repeat of a past event. So I would not doubt it that this good Samaritan, this individual, actually suffered this, this heart condition because of something that happened to him before, and it showed up at that cyclic moment in his life. Uh, now, the fact that we don't eat right uh, is also a helper, because if we take care of our body, these past events, when they hit us, they would not be as unforgiving as well. So the health message is very important here. We have a vehicle. We live in this robot. Hey, let's change the oil when it's proper. If we can, if we can help it, let's put in twenty thousand mile uh, synthetic oil. Let's put the best oil they've got. Yep. yep. Uh, that's how we have to treat this body. But don't stop at the body. Do the same thing with your mind, and then you'll you'll see the revelation of health. You'll see the revelation of better thinking, clarity for seeing your past and understanding the science of life. Robert Maxim with us on the program, author of the Legacy series. That's available, of course, at Amazon. Information on Legacy at Robert's website. Information on so much. Again, I keep saying this and I'm not exaggerating. Allow yourself plenty of time to go to his website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. He doesn't just say things, he documents things, he verifies things, he's got the truth on his website. It's, uh, it's worth the time. And once you start going there, you'll be a regular visitor. And on his website or our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can submit a question that we'll uh, attempt to get to as quickly as possible on the program. Like this next question that came from a listener. I regularly attend worship services at my church. Is that wrong? Oh. Um, <clears throat> well, I always say that Nothing is ever wrong. Uh, I do a lot of things today that tomorrow I might look back and say, well, that was wrong. But as I live today, to me, it's right. So <clears throat> people will determine what's right or what's wrong relative to their actions after they themselves discover what is fitting for them. Uh, the amount of truth that they can live with, for example, and what are the selfish motives that drive this world apart into sex? Because, believe it or not, that's what the word religion amounts to. It means belief of a group. And that is the same word as a sect. So, and that's, that means that religion then is not universal. It's only for a few. 
and everybody else separate. Now, I always say, be more of what you believe in so that if you run into this, into this, into, um, if you deep dive into your belief, you're also going to run into its problems. For example, go buy a car. You won't know its shortcomings until you get an opportunity to use that vehicle. So study, do research, use original documents, and determine for yourself what's right and what is not so. Uh, even what I say, please go verify it. So trust, but verify. Always trust, but verify. And I mentioned that that's really the way you operate the website. You're not just saying something, you say it and you back it up. If you can't back it up, you, you don't say it. It's a real simple proposition. Taking uh, listener viewer questions, and by the way, you can watch their, all of these versions by going to our YouTube channel. You go to uh, thisweekinamerica.us and uh, click on videos. I assume if you go right to YouTube, you'll find the This Week in America page, and that will have all of the, uh, the videos now, 42 videos, um, uh, talking with Robert. And if you go to iTunes, Google Play, all of those, you'll find all the past programs. And again, those are all archived on our website as well. Question, I believe you mentioned on the last interview I heard that you can return from heaven to the flesh. I thought heaven was the end, it was eternity. So we're sort of back to that whole heaven is the, uh, the final destination question that we, uh, we began the problem, the, the second question that, that we began the program with. Uh -huh. Well, see, that's what we're told. But again, what we're told is one thing and what we have to verify is another. If we don't f verify, then shame on us. Uh, as you can see from prior programs, we're not being told everything. Look, read originals. Read about Emperor Justinian's Inquisition. Study and do the research. When Jesus said, Palingenesia, transformation, and when he said, Hanau Anotin, return again from heaven, not born again, return again from heaven. He basically said it all. So note how badly these words and other passages have been changed or covered up. So again, if we're told something and we believe it and don't check it out, no, shame on us. We really need to get... Um, you need to get into the mindset that everything that we're told needs to be verified. Don't take anything from anyone, including myself. Please go check it out, and you're going to start finding these things out. They are out in, in clear, open view if you search for it. So I think what you're saying is many of us may be living our lives by following false doctrine. Someone gets behind a pulpit, gets on the TV show, and, and a religious TV show, and talking about something, we accept it, follow that, and that may not be what we should be following. I, am I correct in that? Absolutely, and I would like to use a pol political figures as a perfect example, and they are not indoctrinators, but yet we treat them as that. Uh, they talk pretty, they talk loud, forceful. Oh, and they sound, they sound honest, they sound doable, so I'm gonna follow that. Am I gonna check it out? No, sounds great. That's the problem. Robert Maxim, a lot uh, Letty just said there on our program, This Week in America, our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Robert's website, our Gaten, our G-A-E-T-A-N.com. You can submit a question there, submit one on the website, and we'll get to it on probably the next uh, program. Questions like, is there an end to our lives? Is there ever a final moment where, it, okay, it's over with now, my, my soul, my spirit is over? Never. Never. Never happens. Now, you can choose it, and it takes a long time to actually destroy yourself, but uh, no, otherwise, never happens. Nah. It's interesting because for so many of us, we're taught to believe that there, there is an end of life, but it's interesting just in listening to what you've said and looking through the material that you've offered, 
That's not really the case. So I invite everybody to go to the website, check out the information, just go online and check out some of the information, uh, sort of verify again what, what you've been following. Question, and this is, this is interesting, if I am a Christian, or I am a, quest, a quest, Christian, when I want to study my religion, I go to my Bible. If I wanted to study the principles you talk about, where do I go? Well, it's right in front of the listener. For starts, what I would advise is pick up the original Bible, not a translation that changes original meaning. Meaning, go read the articles and the documents of the founding Christian fathers. Yeah, you'll be surprised with what they say and compare what you read is like, heavens, there's no comparison here. What happened in between? This is what they said to, found, uh, to establish the faith, and this is something totally different now. What happened? Find out who wrote what book you read and why. Read about how these founding fathers supported reincarnation, for example. Did you know that even the Pharisees supported reincarnation? Mm -hmm. Now, legacy is packed with information and all of its countless sources, and also my website, and how to try also Unarians United as well. That is packed with information too. But as I've said before, just be careful of the source. Always verify everything you hear and read. Verify it. And be careful with language translations. Be very careful. And also, be very careful with detractors. There are a lot of individuals that write out these very beautiful renditions and websites and tell you, no, this is all wrong, this is all false. Again, Go to the original, don't go to an opinion. Go to the original document. Stop reading opinions because the opinions sometimes are slanted by individuals who have been paid to make it so. How do we go about finding a Bible that we can believe in? And I say that because if you go into a lot of bookstores and you ask for a Bible and you've got all these modern translations, maybe a couple of translations, something that was just translated just a couple of weeks ago, that, that type of thing. And we tend to think a Bible is a Bible and you're saying, whoa, that's just not true. That is right. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a writing from uh, um, letter 24 uh, from uh, St. Jerome. And in that letter, he was asked to translate the Principis by origin, uh, by a fellow by the name of Rufinus. And he said, you know, for bad or for, or for good, go ahead and translate it the way it is into Latin. So he did, he translated it, gave it to Rufinus, and Rufinus was shocked. And he took that document and threw it in his door because he was afraid of what would happen if people got a hold of that. And what does the Principis teaches? Reincarnation. Origen was a descendant of the disciple Mark, second generation. Go figure what the disciples were talking about. See, it's, it's things like this that kind of tip you off. And it's also, um, a lot of irresponsible individuals are continuing to act like Rufinus. They believe that this is bad for people and they'd rather cover it up, lie about it, and make you believe something that is not godly. And they think that they're acting on behalf of God. It, it's just unfathomable. But to answer the question, try reading the uh, Blue Letter Bible. It's online. Go check it out. And as you read each verse, click on the Hebrew or the Greek word, each individual word, and take a look at all of the meanings and look at the weight of the meaning. You will find that, uh, uh, especially in the New Testament, that the word chosen is very low on the totem pole. And you wonder why was that word chosen there? It doesn't make any sense. It's not what Jesus was talking about. Why did they use that word? It's like, like the word, um, uh, I am the way, for example. 
and the master who invited his friends and didn't go, so he told his uh, servant, uh, don't bother them. Don't go convert them. Don't go convert them. Just let them go. Go to the people that are on, on the highway. Well, that word highway is the word hodas. And the word hodas is used again when Jesus said, I am the way. I am the hodas. So who are the people that are in the way? The people that need help or the followers of God? Yeah, okay. There you go. So you see how something that simple changes everything. And what are we being taught from the pulpits? Garbage. <laughs> Sorry to say. And there's another thing about what Jesus said, I am the way, ego a me, hodos. The right translation is not ego a me, but ahaya. And ahaya, hodos, means God is the way. Think on that one a little bit and see where you go with that. But if you go to Blue Letter Bible, you're going to learn a whole lot. And you'll be able to go up against any preacher, anyone, and put him to shame. Armed with the truth. So that was you just uh, that was fascinating there. You're listening oh, to yeah. This Week in America. You'll find us online, thisweekinamerica.us. Robert Maxim back with us on the program, talking legacy series and taking your questions. And we seem to have a lot of these uh, that, that have come in since the last program, talking about death and uh, where we go, what happens at that point. And this question is very blunt. Where do we go when we die? Well, thank goodness, nowhere here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we get a tax break. <laughs> uh, our consciousness travels to a higher dimensional plane. Uh, some call heaven. I've had astral flights there. Uh, as a matter of fact, a Venus video will show you one of these places, as I mentioned. But as I said, it's only a rest area. It's a learning center for a return back to Earth, to another world, or even to go beyond the physical plane. So if we evolve out of this lesson school that we're in, when we reincarnate, we don't necessarily have to come back here, but we have to make sure that we leave everything squared away here that we broke, in a sense, or that we need to unlearn and relearn and, and do better. So that's where we go when we die. And um, speaking, speaking of Venus, um, it is just one of many such heavenly worlds. Uh, the cosmos is filled with them. And just as we see physical worlds in our midst, consider that every world out there that you see is physical, even stars, they have a spiritual counterpart because that's where they come from. And you ought to see what they look like. It's phenomenal. Next question, and this is interesting because you hear this thrown around a lot. When evil is done, you are blaming Satan. And the question, very again, a very simple one, is there a Satan, a source of evil? Well, I'll tell you what, when I was a little kid and sometimes I got mad about something, I would blame the other kid, you know. Yes. Uh, and we grew up with that, you know, so now we're not blaming the little kid, we're blaming Satan, but it's the same thing. Uh, simply, there is, but it's not out there, it's me, mm. it's us, it's our lower nature, everybody has one, and that's why we're here, that's not out there. There is no one evil mastermind. Let's let's make sure that we get that straight. It's not somebody out there. And if you read the Old Testament about uh, Lucifer, by the way, that's not his real name. That was made up. Uh, or um, you know the Satan character. If you really read what it means, it means deceiver. So who is the deceiver? Me. It's us. Now that said. I have to clarify that there are negative astral disembodied souls and entities out there and they don't have your best interest in mind. So um, just like there are um, individuals that don't have your best interest at heart that you know in the physical, the same is up in the spiritual worlds. So 
it's something to keep in mind because some of us when we do the crossing we could bump into those astro forces and uh you know we don't want to go with them we want to we want to go with the light and uh whatever they promise no you have to say no don't get stuck with them so i just have to throw that in there so it's not an individual it's just evolutionary souls like us that they have lost their way and they don't act in the best interest of creation they want to destroy it they want it for themselves and that's why they are negative so when somebody has a bad thought when they are tempted and they're saying satan is is trying to get me to do this trying to throw me off course that basically is your own thoughts that are trying to throw you off course indeed it's just no sense of responsibility when people do that we have to own up to what we feel and what we do it's our responsibility and even if some astral force pinches us to make us mad or to make us desire this you know it's eventually your and my responsibility to say no so why are we so weak and incompetent that we can't say no it's not hard to say no you just keep the universal laws in mind keep the teachings of jesus in your heart and there's absolutely nothing you cannot overcome well said robert maxim our guest on this week in america taking your questions next question has the government ever attempted to silence you oh yeah more than oh once. yeah <laughs> that, was, that oh. was that was a quick response and a, an affirmative response you know, at one time, I was even denied entrance back into Jet Propulsion Laboratory after they found out I was gathering information on photo smudging techniques, photo smudging and altering techniques out there. So, uh, yeah, I've had my, I've had my fill. Uh, I've had individuals trying to detract what I say. Uh, it's all part of the negative mafucious planet that we live in and it's not just the government it's the government is actually run by other forces that most people don't know about and they are the ones that are sending out their government little minions out there to do their dirty work for them so we blame it on the government folks uh-uh okay Go now up. you just hire you just left that there, okay? Can you go any further on that? Talk about the government. Who who actually is the government? Should we be concerned just, of the government? I think I just opened up the can of worms. <laughs> I think that you <laughs> you have, and they may come pound on your door during the course of the night. So if you want to go on to the next question, we can do that. But you've let that uh, lay out there. It's like, okay, I need to pursue this and find out exactly what you're talking about. Uh, let's just consider that. <clears throat> what is shown to us up front is not necessarily uh, the true government. Uh, yes, we elect our leaders, but we're all electing them under a specific condition that we ourselves don't even understand. A lot, of, a lot of the, a lot of what controls this world, believe it or not, goes right back into astral spiritual planes. Now you would think, well, how can Suppose that dead people be controlling people. Well, I just I just explained a minute ago how it works. Yes. So that is affecting people here that affect the government. I mean, it's uh, you've heard of Illuminati. Illuminati is nothing by comparison to the huge mafia. <clears throat> excuse me. That is controlling every movement of this planet. If you read Legacy, you're going to find out about it. It's described there in detail. Uh, again, Illuminati is just a very small corner of of these uh, of these forces. So uh, there are thousands of organizations that all work together to try to make this world what it is. So another reason why we want to get out of here. And another reason why you should be reading Legacy, which is available at uh, Amazon.com, also at Robert's website, Argatan, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. It's entertaining and it's uh, enlightening as well, the Legacy series. Question, and again, we're back to this heaven thing that we, we actually started the program talking about. Is it possible heaven is basically an advanced planet? Possibly some of the alien visitors are actually from heaven. Is that far-fetched or possible? 
Wow. Yeah. This, this listener is, he's really tuned in. Yes. My goodness. Yeah, I like that. He, he answered it. Yes. Now, <clears throat> advanced spiritual planets, plural, yes, and yes, ascendant beings do pay us visits. Now, we mistake them sometimes for angels, but you won't find them in spacecraft necessarily because they don't really need them. Let me take the listener one step further. <coughs> what if you have somebody like Nikola Tesla being a host for one of these beings? What about someone who is channeling information from one of these higher beings? They don't necessarily have to be here. They can host someone. They can speak to someone. Uh, and I'm going to throw something out there. Remember when Jesus said, it is not I, but the Father within that does all things. Think on that carefully. Buzz on it. Read it in Greek, in Greek carefully and understand what he was saying. I'll leave that as homework. Well, I've got a lot of homework here, taking notes, because there's so many things you need to, uh, to look <laughs> into after this. You just left us with a, uh, a whole lot, so I'll let that sink in as we go on to the next question. I keep hearing the saying, you only live once. Do you believe that to be true? Absolutely not. I mean, there are a lot of things that I live right now that I don't want to live again. Uh, I want to progress <laughs> and leave my old ways behind. <laughs> but... No, absolutely not. Uh, and I have biblical and scientific evidence to prove that you live more than once. And it's on website, science tab, it's also in legacy. The amount of evidence is ju just, um, it's just massive. If they mean that, not necessarily in the literal sense, where you only live once, so go ahead and do it, but you sort of use that as an excuse. I've wanted to do that, never done it, but I really need to do that. And maybe it's you only live once in this particular life. Is that, is that sometimes used in that, uh, that context where it's sort of an excuse to do something you wouldn't normally do? What did the snake tell the woman in, in the Garden of Eden? If you eat the fruit, you're not going to die. So, gonna live once, go do it, right? Yeah. Same thing. Yes. yes. It's the same lie. So, uh, again, just because somebody says it, don't trust it. Go verify. Hope we answered your question. Robert Maxim answering questions on This Week is in America, the website thisweekinamerica.us. Comment section there, you can ask your question that will relay to Robert on the next program. We'll go right to the source, go right to uh, Robert's website, argaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com, and uh, you can leave a question for Robert there. I was watching a TV show on Destination America dealing with ghosts and hauntings. Mm -hmm. do, you do you believe in ghosts, Robert Maxim? Well, they don't believe in me, so why should I believe in them? <laughs> okay, it's only fair. It's only fair. <laughs> That's because I don't pay attention to them. Uh, ghosts are disembodied beings, uh, but but sometimes are also thoughts of those people that are living that make their thoughts manifest. Try to grasp that one. So yes, I'm talking about astral projection from ourselves that know no time or space. So uh, I can vouch for the fact I've had those experiences myself. I've had experiences where I have uh, had the presence of individuals that I know in my room and, I, and I've and i known it's them and I've called them and, and told them, you know, you were just here, you were doing, were you sleeping? Yeah, I was sleeping. I was having a nightmare. I was walking through some hallway. Guess where you were? my house <laughs> so oh. so this happens so sometimes mental projection is what we call a ghost at other times yeah there are disembodied entities that are bumping in the night and they are trying to devour somebody so a word to the wise got about five minutes left in the program time for a couple of questions what we have left over we'll talk about next time we want new questions to come in as well next question 
What control do we have over our higher self? Something higher self that <coughs> you've, you've talked a lot about. What control do we actually have over our higher self? None really. The higher self is our boss. Uh, we are simply an extension, a coach that the higher self brings down here to educate the, uh, the soul's lower nature. So now we have no control over the higher self and we ought, to, we ought to be listening to it more often than we do. Well, the next question ties into that. Is your conscience your higher self? Is what, what it, well, I'll let you answer that, then, then I'll follow up. The consciousness is only an extension of the higher self. It's, a, uh, uh, it's an intelligence package, basically, that it's created so that instruction can be passed from a higher nature to a lower nature to evolve it. Eventually the consciousness will join with a higher self in some future time and become one master being. So right now the consciousness is just a tool of the higher self to, to go up and down the soul structure from low to medium to higher levels and educate all of those sources. So that's what the consciousness is. This next question probably will take a few minutes at least, so we'll, uh, we'll close the program with this. You've talked before about this. Is a time machine plausible, and mm. do, do aliens use a time machine? We see it in, in science fiction, and it's great, and it's fun to think about what you, what you could do with that, the, the applications of a time machine. Is it plausible, and do aliens use a time machine? Yes and yes. Uh, we have to remember that other dimensions are in different time zones where injections into various time events in this dimension are possible so actually let's think about this each star each planet each person each atom each energy pulse each particle is in itself its own dimension with its own time zone. But when you take them all together into a common form, then they become a common time zone. So <clears throat> unlike Einstein said that if you go from here to there, the speed of light, then you have time dilation and no. What happens is that once you enter space, you enter a different time zone and there are different time zones in space uh, we're looking at star systems where the planets are spinning around the star like super fast. So, oh, it must be that the planet is very close to the star and it, it, it's very massive and that's why it's, it goes so fast. Nobody could live there. Stop and think. A star system is in a different time zone. And maybe they're spinning just fine. But when we look at it, they go faster. And when they look at us, we're just going so slow because by comparison we are slower than they are it's it's all relative the, the, we have to understand dimensions time and space in order to understand how a time machine works and, and this is just one facet of time travel the other facet is that the a dimension overlay on top of all of the time zones that we have in the physical dimension are nothing more than tunnels and those tunnels can put us into the past, into the future. Uh, however, each time that that is done, there can be an impact to both dimensions, parallax, parallax-wise. So those that use time travel, they better know what they're doing or else they're going to mess up not only this place, but that place too, and others. So it's very dangerous to do and it's only done for medicinal reasons. It's a good place to, uh, to leave the program. Such great information on the show tonight. As always, Robert Maxim, M-A-X-X-I-M, our guest on the program. His website is argaten, R-G-A-E-T-A-N.com. He's the author of the Legacy Series. You'll find the information on the Legacy Series at Amazon.com as well as at Robert's website. And you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. 
We spent to uh, the program today taking your questions. We will do that again for Legacy 43. You can participate by asking a question. Simply go to one of our websites, thisweekinamerica.us or rgaten.com and leave the, uh, the question and we'll attempt to get to that as quickly as possible. Robert's got a lot coming up, a couple of uh, trips to uh, Los Angeles here in the next uh, month or so where he'll be speaking. You'll get all the information. Robert, just go to the website and check it all out. Yeah, I'm assuming that we've got a Skype issue there, but if you go to uh, Robert's website, you'll be able to get all the information on uh, the speaking engagements coming up in Los Angeles at uh, a couple of conferences, the July 20, January 26th, and uh, again in early February. Robert, if you can hear me, thank you so much for being with us on the program. Look forward to having you back uh, once again next month. My pleasure, and also my thanks to the listeners who've given me this opportunity to uh, to present these concepts to them and uh, to be of service. Thank you. Well, you are of service, and thank you for taking the time with us uh, every month to answer these questions. Uh, another uh, excellent group of questions tonight on the program. We'd love to have yours. Give us uh, a, a, an email at thisweekinamerica.us or rgaten.com. You're listening to This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. <laughs>